Good afternoon and welcome to Audio Tree Live. Today is Thursday, April 12, 2018, and we are thrilled to have in studio the Chamanas. All right, guys, take it into your first song. Watching Audio Tree Live, we're here with the Chamanas. How are you guys feeling? We're so happy to have you here. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, we're feeling great. You had a long drive though for this. Yeah, we drove <laughs> from Texas, so we had a couple shows in Texas, and then uh, we drove all the way to Chicago and played last night at the Emporium Arcade. That bar. place is really fun. Yeah, yeah, it was super fun, and they gave us a bunch of tokens. So. <laughs> 
We were like playing uh, Ninja Turtles, like, <laughs> like we were like 12 oh, years. Yeah. So it was so fun. Yeah, that's tradition. That's a that's a really cool venue. Um, so you were telling me that you worked at a studio in El Paso, which was really cool, um, and worked with some fun artists and stuff. I was reading. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Uh, Hector, the guitar player, and me, we worked uh, as uh, engineers at Sonic Grand Studios, and so yeah, we were fortunate enough to to participate in a lot of records with you know artists like Portillo the Man and. Beach House, yeah, yes, Animal yeah. Collective, like really cool bands, and um, it was like a really nice studio, like this one too. So, and so that's where the start. Actually, that's where the band started the project. We were just recording demos and and just jamming out, and little by little, all the other members started coming in, like Bustillos uh, or Alejandro. Uh, he he recorded drums for the first record, and he stayed with the band. And then Paulina joined us uh, almost two years ago. She was like the final piece of the yeah. band, and but yeah, it's it's a super nice studio, and you know it's a beautiful place out in the in the desert, but it's actually inside a pecan orchard. It's one of the largest pecan orchards. A pecan in the orchard? World. Yeah, that's so and funny. Uh, I know Texas is kind of famous yep. for pecans. Um, my family's from there, like I said earlier, and mm -hmm. uh, we're all they have a pecan tree, so we always go. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a, yeah. So you can imagine it's twenty three hundred acres of pecans there. So oh my god, heaven. and then uh, Tony <laughs> Tony Rancic, the the owner, like he's a great host too. So anyone that goes there and record it, they just have a a blast. You'll probably do the the best record there for sure. That's super awesome. I'll, I'd love to visit sometime if I can Anytime. make it out. Um, so whose idea was it to do the Portugal the Man cover? Which I saw. There's a couple of videos. They're really awesome. Um, did you all think of that together? And then you worked with that project also yeah that was actually John Gurley's idea the singer it was his idea and their management so they thought it was uh, uh, initially it was um, they wanted to do a split seven record of like you know uh, their songs in another language and then the original ones and then uh, that didn't come through but they still wanted us to do that we had the Spanish version done a long time ago and then they were like hey you still guys you guys still have that version of yours so like yeah let's do something for Cinco de Mayo I was like all right sure so that's when we did purple yellow red and blue and then they they were last year they were like you guys want to do the same thing for Phil it still I was like yeah hell yeah <laughs> it just keeps <laughs> so, coming yeah so they we had a lot of fun doing a lot of fun doing that thing and then um so you know so we it's been like something really important for us and and they're really good friends, and then they're also, you know, supporting us, and then they try to take us on their tour sometimes. And so, you know, we're really grateful to with Portugal the Men and the whole team. That's really that. awesome. Mm -hmm. Let's go into your next two songs.
watching Audio Tree Live. We're here with the Chamanas. So you all have a pretty recent album release. Is it N E A? Is that how you say it, or is it? Yeah, it's actually Nea. Oh, okay. Yeah, what does that stand for or mean? Spanish. Well, actually, uh, this record was uh, like uh, um, uh, it was dedicated. Yeah, it was dedicated to dedication. To, yeah, it was dedication to uh, a couple of people that passed away. Uh, one of them was my brother. But we were like in the creative process of doing this uh, album, and then he passed away a week after my mom passed away. So it was it was all like uh, it was rough times. I mean, for, for it, it was for me and for all the whole the, like the whole band because we were like in the middle of of doing this new record. Like you know, a lot of people were were expecting are ex were expecting a lot of a lot of like big stuff and important stuff for for the Chamanas since it was going to be the like the second album, right? So uh, this, uh, uh, everything that happened put like a stop on the creative process, of course. And, and, uh, but you know, um, all the direction and everything of this album changed because of that. So that's why we, we decided to put that, that, that name. That was his nickname. He was actually Hector Daniel, but that was his nickname. So they decided to put that name and, and I was so like honored to, to have his nickname like in this album and everything. So there's like songs that talk about it and everything. So yeah, yeah I'm pretty happy. That's really <laughs> important and cool that you took that experience and kind of channeled it into the project rather than, you know, not finishing it or not yeah. having this music. Um, what are some of your influences as far as production and writing go? I'm really curious to pick your brains on that. Actually, um, all, all of our music is produced by Manny. Um, uh, we, we started this, like Manny said, we started this project in, uh, at Sonic Ranch. And uh, basically that was like the, like the, um, the way we started doing music. Uh, I was basically writing most of the songs and Manny was producing all of the songs. So this is, this is how, how uh, both, como uh, columnas, both uh, uh, like important structures of the band, mm -hmm. structures, yeah, uh, started. So... Uh, Manny was in charge of all the productions, so maybe he, he can he can talk a little more about the, the, the influence. I think a lot of the influence varies a lot. Um, like uh, just listening to our playlist, driving down the road, it just varies a lot. Like in uh, both English and Spanish realms. Um, but you know, we we uh, when this project was starting, um, a lot of the songwriting was like based on a traditional Mexican. Uh, songwriting like like boleros and rancheros so Hector would bring in a song that he would just write on his guitar and it would sound like I would even make fun of him I'd tell him like it sounded like songs from the church you know like, like, <laughs> and it was to... actually one of my biggest influences I yeah, was, I was uh, gonna ask you. Church, like, like, <laughs> When I was 11, I started there, so I started playing guitar at the church. So. A lot of people start in church, and then it's interesting to see what, what kind of shifts when you become an adult and mm -hmm. move into your own sort of choices and stuff. It's, yeah, and so so then uh, he would bring the, the song, and then I would just play with it in, you know, in the studio and, and just try to experiment with it, you know. So, so you can hear a lot of, like, the wapango, a lot of, like, the Mexican traditional sounds, but, you know, with synths or with drum machines and... And fortunately, we had Sonic Ranch, you know, you know, we can use it whenever we wanted to. So we were just going to the studio and record and then just experiment. But, you know, none of us are singers, so that's when Paulina came in, you know. And so it sounded really cool when we had it as a demo. And then once Paulina would come in and sing, it just, like, took it to another level, too. So, and then Bustillos, he, he came in when we were finishing the first record. And we just needed like some real drums, you know, in, in the tracks. And so I never pictured them to rock out as much. But <laughs> so he would come in and they're like, oh, actually it sounds cool. Like just with some like, you know, a little heavier drums. Because at the beginning stage, it was just like electronic drum machines, you know, like a little more with the electronic feel. And then so when Bustillos came in, he kind of gave it that that rock attitude, you know. Yeah, it's a nice mix of both that you have going on. Exactly, and then in his family, he's considered like the rocker, so we have to honor that, you know, he's a rock and roll guy. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I don't know about that. <laughs> um, I was going to ask you, Hector, what do you hope that people take away from your music? Because I know you put a lot of personal um, just life experience into it also, but I see Paulina dancing as well, so I'm like, dan it's dancey and emotional. What's your goal sort of with writing songs? I mean, uh, it's, uh, uh, it's, it's kind of weird, because um, 
uh, some of the songs that, that we actually we just just played uh, were written by me, just by myself and mm -hmm. stuff. But then production comes like into the song and everything, and it changes. It just it starts to feel like it if it's not your song, it starts to feel like the band song. Like, yeah. And and everyone starts like to put their own style, their own like feeling, their own just their own like essence maybe uh, into the song. So it becomes something completely different as it was when I started writing it with my guitar. Yeah. And and just with like voice memo or whatever, right? <laughs> yeah. And um, so I don't feel like it's my song. It's it's already like the the band song because everyone like puts all their heart, all their efforts, all their like their art into a song. So it so it just changes. So I think this is like very important because uh people start to to notice all this all these things. I think that's that's one of the the, the main purposes that makes people go into a, a concert and hear us and start like cheering and singing and everything because because of this, because all, all like the all the vibe and everything that as a band, we put into our music. So, um, one of the one of the the um, uh, I don't know how to say it in Spanish. I'm sorry. Uh, the reasons we uh, we uh, chose the chamanas was was because uh, the border the in English chamanas in Spanish because it represents being a pocho. Pocho means like mixing both uh, languages at the same time. Mm -hmm. Spanish. And yeah, yeah it's Spanish basically. And um, because we think that the shaman is the music, so uh, we connect with the with the music. People connect with the music, and just everything around us around us just changes, and it makes people feel better, and, and makes everyone just be like, like unified because of music. So yeah, it's, yeah. So it's, it's, I think there's a lot of stuff that maybe it's it's hard to explain, but we 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 start to 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 notice all this kind of stuff. Now that we have the chance to be touring and everything. Yeah, that's awesome. It's like a very community building kind of experience. So that's cool. Um, let's go into your next tune.
You're tuning into Audio Tree Live. We're here with the Chamanas, and they are currently tuning up for their last song. Um, what are your guys' future plans? What are you excited for coming up in the future? No plans. <laughs> <laughs> None whatsoever. No <laughs> shows. <laughs> just get, yeah, just getting breakfast or something. <laughs> <laughs> just eating yeah. something. We need to get some food before we go back to El Paso, so that's Please important. do. I, please <laughs> don't not eat. <laughs> No, I think, well, we're coming back to El Paso, actually, and then we're going to stay there, like, for a week, and then we will, um, we'll have to drive again up to New York, and then we have a couple of shows over there, and then coming back, and the release of the new album is going to be on June 20, so we're starting to making this West Coast route for promoting the, the new album. Amazing. Um, Paulina, what's one of your favorite cities to play in? Um, obviously, Chicago. <laughs> Good. Yeah, but I don't know. I think I don't have like a favorite city. Um, we are just trying to do our best in any city that we visit. So it's it just my favorite thing is to connect with the people. So every city is different. Yeah. And I think. We, we don't have enough time to, ¿cómo se dice turistear? Uh, just uh, visit. I don't know, to like visit to, places. To around. To, around. Yeah, but I don't know. We are very happy to do this. Yes, you we bring the energy enjoying. with you. <laughs> yeah. That's good. All right, well, we have one more song with you. It's been a pleasure having you in the studio today. Thank, Thank you, so you. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us. Mm -hmm.
You've been watching Audio Tree Live. This has been a session with the Chamanas. We are so happy to have had you in studio today. Um, to wrap up, I want to give a thank you to the sound engineers, everyone in studio, camera and lighting crew, and to all of you for watching. If you like what you heard, you can download or stream this session in a few weeks when it comes out. And from all of us here at Audio Tree Live, thank you for watching. <laughs>